Good morning, everyone. You are welcome to today's lecture. We'll be talking about potentiometer and its applications. In the last class, we spoke about Whitstone Bridge and its applications. But today, we'll be talking about potentiometer and its application. The, the Whitstone Bridge and the potentiometer, they share something a bit uh, common. A, a potentiometer is an instrument for measuring potentials, difference, or voltages, EMF, in a circuit. Just like we know about voltmeters that are used in measuring voltages, the potentiometer is even older than the voltmeters that we have these days in our laboratories. And it works by measuring the fraction of voltage from a resistive slide wire. Resistive slide wire like what you have on your meter bridge in the laboratory. So it also helps in comparing unknown voltages by the use of a galvanometer. As we know, a galvanometer is a device that measures the tiny current flow. It helps in detecting current flow of a very low magnitude. So the sliding contacts, or what you call the joy key in the laboratory of the potentiometer is adjusted until the deflection of the galvanometer is zero. When we were talking about Whitstone Bridge, we spoke about a particular resistor that is not fixed, but it is a variable resistor that we can adjust. A resistor that looks like that of the uh, volume controller in many transistor ridges. And we moved on to talk about meter bridge where we were moving, trying to find the balance point or the meter bridge. So similarly in potentiometers, we also look for balance points and the balance points help in determining the property or the potential difference of EMF, uh, EMF of cells. It also helps in determining the uh, voltage measurements at uh, certain points. Yeah. So potentiometers can be used as uh, voltage dividers. So we'll be seeing that very shortly. If you have watched the video that I posted on the channel, that is, uh, there are two labeled example zero. There is one of the example zeros that explains this circuit simply. Looking at this circuit we have here, we have resistors R1 and R2 connected to voltage V in. Resistors R1 and R2, they are in series and they are connected to voltage V in. Then V out is the voltage across this resistor R2. So that means that this setup, this arrangement of R1 and R2 is called voltage divider or potential divider. And the work is to divide this V in into something smaller than V in. So like we uh, have said previously the, uh, from Kitchell's voltage law, the voltage that will drop across R1 and the voltage that will drop across R2, when we add them together, it should give us V in. So the V out here is just the voltage across R2. And how do we determine 
the voltage that will drop across R2 just by the knowledge of the input voltage and these two resistors. Now that's the equations we have here. But before that, before we go to the equations, this arrangement of resistors R1 and R2 can be useful to you when you need a certain voltage. Let's say what you need is five volts. Let's say what you need is five volts. And what you have, what you need is five volts. But what you have is 12 volts. How do you get five volts from 12 volts? A circuit can do like this can help you do that. And what that means is that you need to bring two or more resistors in order to break down the 12 volts into fragments. And you now uh, get the part that uh, will the two points that will uh, give a potential difference of five volts. So let's go back to this uh, diagram. We have connected V in across resistors R1 and R2. And because R1 and R2 are in series, then we should expect that the same current that flows through R1 will flow through R2. Then we can say that the current I that will flow through R1 and R2 will be equal to the voltage supplied across the resistors divided by the total resistance. And what is the total resistance we have here? The total resistance we have here is R1 plus R2. That is the current that will flow through R1 and R2, it is I. Since the current that flows through R1 is also the one that will flow through R2, we can have another equation that says that that same current I is equal to the voltage or the potential difference across R2. Potential difference across R2 is V out. Sorry, I forgot to put in here, V in. Is the potential difference across R1 and R2. So, but the, the same current that flows through R2, the, and then the potential difference across R2 is V out. And the resistance of R2, R2. And now we can see that this equation here is equal to this equation because they both, they are both equal to I. And that is the origin of this expression. So from this expression of uh, circled in red, we can now say make V out the subject of the formula and have our V out to be R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in to give us V out. So I still recommend that you watch the videos especially uh, that I labeled example zero on the uh, channel. So this is another example of what we've just seen. This is another example of uh, this circuit is similar to this one. In this circuit, instead of us having two fixed resistors, we have a single variable resistor. And the input voltage is V in, and the output voltage is at the middle here, which is uh, V out. So any circuit element that looks like this is called a variable resistor. And examples of variable resistors are volume controllers we have on our transistor radius, as I like to call a bulky radius. There are also some devices where you want the, your light bulb to, the brightness of your light bulb to vary. A circuit component like this can be very useful. So the two ends of the circuit component is connected to the main 
voltage supply, while the middle point is the one that relies on the position of the variable controller, just like your old radios when you increase the volume. What you are doing is you are shifting this arrow from the base upwards. So when this arrow, when you have reduced the volume to the minimum, it's as good as you have brought this arrow to this point. And this point is just like ground, it's like zero, point zero, you'd have zero volts. But when you begin to increase the volume and you turn it until this arrow gets to the top, that is the maximum volume you will get. And uh, the volume from your radio also can be connected to the voltage that gets to your speakers. So this device that is called a variable resistor can help also to say, let's do voltage division. Let's take, take this to be 12 volts. It seems to I like 12 volts. Regardless of the resistance of this variable resistors, because the variable resistors, you also have resistance values. It can be one kilo ohm, it can be 10 kilo ohm, it can be one mega ohm, 100 kilo ohms, it can have any value, but we are less concerned about that now. When you have 12 volts connected across this variable resistor, the 12 volts will split continuously across the resistor. And we can call this base to be zero, and we call the top part to be 12 volts. And depending on how fine you can divide this resistor you can have infinite number of points to mean certain voltages so can be you can divide it such as to 12 where you have one volts two volts one two three and likes you can divide it into twelve thousand where you'll be having one millivolts two millivolts until you get to uh, 12 volts the point I want to drive out here is that this setup, which is a voltage divider, can also help you to bring out required voltages. When I have connected that volume controller that looks something like this, it also has three terminals, and I've connected it to power, like uh, this resistor has been connected to 12 volts. You can vary the knob, you can turn the knob until you get a desired voltage. And that desired voltage can help you regulate the uh, uh, speed of your fan, the brightness of your bulb, the uh, volume of your audio device and the likes. Let's move on. So now suppose R1 is one ohm and uh, R2 is three ohms. What is the potential difference across R1 and R2? Let's go back to that. Let's go back to this and call this one ohm and three ohms. Let's say this is, let's say the entire resistance value of this variable resistor is four ohms. But you have now set it such that, you have now set it such that the lower part here is three ohms, while the upper part is one ohm. The upper part I mean is to say that the resistance between this point and this point is now one ohm while the resistance between this point and this point is now three ohms. Well, if we do addition of resistors in series, they will add up to four ohms. Now, the question is, what will be the voltage drop across R2? And what will be the voltage drop across R1? 
or let's use the, the language of yes, the potential difference across R1 and the potential difference across R2. The potential difference across R2 is what we have seen in this expression here. And that is as good as saying, let's call it VR2. VR2 is equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in. And that is equal to three over one plus three times V in. And that is 0 0.75, that is 0 0.75 V in. So when it's set there, if you put a 10 volt battery as V in, then you should be expecting uh, 7.5 volts across R2. When it's 100 volts, you should be expecting 75 volts across R2. And then the other question is saying, what is the voltage across R1? And that's as good as saying VR1 to be equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in. And that is one over one plus three times V in. And that is one over four times V in. And that is equal to 0 0.25 V in. So that means when this is 10 volts, we would expect to have three quarter here, which is 7.5 volts. And we should expect to have one quarter here, which is 2.5 volts of the V in, which is 10 volts. And the point we should always find interesting, a little graduate to seeing it as normal, is that the 2.5 volts here will add up to 7.5 volts here to give 10 volts kitchen of voltage law. Well, this uh, slide wire potentiometer, it is used to determine the EMF of cells. It is used to determine the EMF of uh, cells when you have in this diagram what we have here okay sorry spotlight what we have here is emf a battery of emf e not a battery with known emf so now we have two batteries we know the emf of this battery but for this ex we don't know the emf of ex but with the aid of a resistance wire, with the aid of a resistance wire like what you have on your meter bridge, or let me say with the aid of a meter bridge, you can determine the potential difference of EX. As far as the potential, uh, sorry, you can find the EMF of EX. As far as the EMF of uh, this battery, as far as the EMF of this battery, is less than that of the known EMF. So and it starts by we saying the EMF of the known resist, uh, sorry, the EMF of the known, uh, the known EMF of the battery, which is E naught, is connected across AB. And what happens when uh, it's connected across AB? Let us give it values. Let's make it less abstract. Let's say the EMF of this battery is, I start again, 12 volts. Today, let's change this. We've used too many 12 volts. Let's make it 10 volts. 10 volts. A simple idea in electricity is that 
I have connected 10 volts across a resistance wire. This is the negative terminal. This is the positive terminal. Ordinarily, I can assume this negative terminal to be at potential zero, while the positive terminal I can assume is at 10 volts. Then, just like we've said in voltage division, when we're talking about the potential divider, these 10 volts will split up all through this resistance wire AB. Last said the AB is a resistance wire. Okay, often one meter. So let's even assume this is a meter bridge. A meter bridge has a length of one meter. One meter is 100 centimeters. Let's work it 100 centimeters. I think that would be cool. Let's length AB. This is uh, the Let's turn it upside down. Let's say this is the zero mark. Let's say this is zero mark on the meter room, zero centimeter. And let's call this point the 100 centimeter mark. Let's call point A the 100 centimeter mark and point B to be the zero centimeter mark. I can tell you that forgetting about, let's forget about this other that connections that are here. Let's forget about everything we have here. Let's just focus on this battery. Let's focus on this resistance wire AB of length 100 centimeters. And let's focus on this 10 volts battery. So with this connection, I can tell you that the potential at this point, let's use another color, green. The potential at this point, we can call it zero volts. And the potential at this point, we can call it 10 volts. In between, 50 centimeter mark, you can see that will be five volts, no argument. 30 centimeter mark, three volts. 20 centimeter mark, two volts. 10 centimeter mark, one volt, 90 centimeter mark, nine volts. Let me also. I don't think we need any prophet to tell us that between the 10 centimeter mark and the 20 centimeter mark, where should be 15 centimeters. I don't need, we need a prophet to tell us that the potential at that point will be 1.5 volts. So this is voltage division in any way we want to look at it. From the first diagram, where we have two fixed resistors, voltage divides cross resistors. When we moved into variable resistors, voltage divides across resistors. And when we even come to use of the meter bridge, voltage divides across the resistor. In this case, across the resistance wire. And that simply means that electricity just like what in physics our rules are always obeyed the rules of physics they stand very strong okay enough of bragging let us have uh, let's move forward and open up this yellow circle Let's open this here a second. And let's say, now we know that we have connected this 10 volts battery across the 100 centimeter mark and the voltage has been divided all through. If I come here and I say, what is the potential difference between this point? What is the potential difference between this point 
the 50 centimeter mark and the 30 centimeter mark. What is the potential difference there? I would expect you to say that the potential difference at this point is five volts, while at this point is three volts. Then the potential difference is five minus three, which is two volts. That will be the potential difference across that point. So let's clear all this and let's face the problem. So just like we have established the fact that voltage will be divided across this wire, and now we now have another battery whose EMF we do not know. But for E0, we know the voltage across the voltage E0 has been spread across from A to B. Now we have brought another battery EX. When we begin to slide E, uh, when we connect EX to a galvanometer, the galvanometer will let us know if current is flowing out of this battery or not. When current is flowing in the through this galvanometer to the right, it deflects to the right, and when it's flowing backwards, the galvanometer deflects backwards. So when we have this type of connection, just like we did in Western Beach, it helps us to know when current is flowing in or out of this battery. At a particular point on this line AB, on this wire AB, there is a particular point on that wire AB where the potential difference between this point and this point, there is a particular point in which the potential difference between point A and a certain point X, where the potential difference between those points will equal to the EMF of this battery with unknown EMF. Like I've said before, one major condition is that the value of EX, which we do not know, should be less than the value of E0 that we know. E0 is a standard cell, we know it's EMF and we have connected it across the resistance wire. The voltage has been divided across it and uh, we have the liberty of moving this jockey, this pointer, or what other vocabulary did we use to qualify that point earlier? The wiper, the sliding contact. We have the liberty of moving it all around. So since we can move this all around, it's as good as we playing with the volume controller of our radio sets. So now we have the liberty of moving X, slide it up or down as we like. But there will be a point that we will put it where the potential difference between point A and that particular point will be equal to EX. And at that point, this galvanometer will show you zero. That current is neither flowing out of EX nor flowing into EX. So when we place this value X at a particular length L, where the potential, the EMF EX is greater than the potential difference between that point A and X, we would expect current to flow out of EX. But when we take it further down, where the potential difference between this point A and the new point X is greater than EX, we would expect current to flow into EX. But in between those two points is a certain distance where the potential difference between the line will be equal the potential difference between uh, between those two points in that line will be equal to EMF EX, and the galvanometer will cease to deflect. And that point, the potential difference of that point, will be said to be the EMF of the cell with use EMF is unknown. That is EX. Let's move forward. Another good thing about the, this type of arrangement is that when we know the value of E0, when we know the value of E0, and we have 
Okay, let's even assume the value of E0 is large, but we don't even know it. But we now have two other batteries. We have two other batteries. We have one EX, and we also have another one EY. Let's assume we know the value of EY. We don't know that of Enox, but we know the, the value of EY, and we don't know that of EX. So Enox unknown, EX unknown, EY known. The only condition here is that E not should be greater than EX and EY. E not, as long as it is greater than EX and EY, then we can determine the value of this unknown EX. We may not be able to determine the value of E not, but at least we know EY and we have another EX that we do not know. With the knowledge of uh, EY, we can determine EX. By this arrangement, we put EY in this position of EX, check the length where we have the balance point, check the length where there is no current flow through the galvanometer, record it, and also replace it with this EX and now check the length. So with the length of the balance points for EY and EX, it can help us to determine the value of EX. So just like we said in Whitstone Beach, the points where the points where the where there is no deflection is known as the balance point. The point where there is no deflection in the galvanometer is known as the balance point. The same thing applies into this topic. Let's see what we have next. So in this scenario, the balance point here, let's as in the balance point here is X. We have now we've moved the wire uh, all around and we found that at this point X, galvanometer reading is zero. Then from that we can say this length L is now the uh, the major variable that will help us in determining the voltage of this uh, the EMF of this cell EX, and we know that the length AB itself is 100 centimeters for, let's say, 100 centimeters. So the unknown voltage EX can be calculated from the fraction of the length of resistance wire AX over AB. Look at it now, AX over AB. This looks like what we did initially by saying this is a resistor R1 and R2 where we now said uh, R1 over R1 plus R2. R1 here is represented by length L, while R1 plus R2 is represented by AB, just like we have here, AB to mean R1, sorry, AX rather, AX from the common points to X to mean R1 and AB to be the total resistor network, total resistance of the whole resistor network. And length AB, which is A to B, is R1 plus R2, while length AX, which is just R1, is the numerator. So when you look at this again carefully, you will see that all the uh, different values, be, all the different diagrams we've been talking about, they are Electrically, looking at them, analyzing them electrically, you see that they are still the same diagram, just having different shapes. So let's move forward. So at point X, Where we measure EX, the potential difference at, uh, the potential difference there is VA minus VX. The potential at A minus the potential at X. So the potential here, let's call it VA. And potential here, let's call it VX. 
Then at that balance point, like I've said, the EMF of the battery EX is equal to the potential difference VA minus VX. But we may not be able to even know. Okay, let's continue. And at this point, we'll be talking about since the uh, we have used a resistance wire, and we know that the oh sorry, let me change the color. We have used a resistance wire, and we know from one of the properties of resistors that the resistance of a wire is directly proportional to the length. So as length increases, resistance increases. So now we have introduced a small letter R here to mean the resistance of the wire per unit length. So the resistance of the wire per unit length is represented as R over L. So when we multiply this small r times l, both values we have here, that is rl, will mean the big R. And ir will still mean va minus vx. So without wasting time, let's move down to this equation that tells us that E1, when we have two EMFs, two batteries of EMFs, E1 and E2, you can subsequently obtain their corresponding lengths, balance lengths as L1 as, and L2. And that will mean that E1 equal to, E1 equal to I, R. What, you know, v, just like V equal to I, R. But in this case, instead of saying the big R, Instead of using the big R, let us use the product of the small R and its length. So the length here will be L1. And when we're talking about E2 as well, E2, the same current that, uh, that flowed through that wire from point A, the same current that flowed from point A to point a X also flowed from point A to point B. So we can still say that E2 is equal to I R L2. So we can call this equation one, equation two, and we can say, let us divide E1 with E2. Let's divide E1 with E2 and dividing E1 with E2 we have this beautiful expression. E1 over E2 equal to L1 over L2. From where IR cancels IR, then you can see that directly, even without the knowledge of the resistance of that resistance wire, just with the knowledge of the fact that we know either E1 or E2, with the length of their balance points, we can determine the unknown EMF. So no matter what on the meter bridge, you when you determine, you can always determine your length directly. These ones can be easily determined. So when you can determine this L1 and L2 easily, and you know either one of E1 or E2, then you can you easily, then you know the other one that is that appears to be unknown. So this is an example on the comparison of EMF in an experiment to determine unknown EMF of a cell. A balance point is obtained at 50.3 centimeter. And after replacement with another cell, the balance point is 72.3. What that means is that 50.3, 72.3. Fifty point three seventy two point three. What that means is that in this scenario, we don't know E naught, and we are not interested in knowing E naught, but we know E one, well, let's say E X, and the balance points of E X give us fifty point three centimeters. 
And now we now we are now have another battery labeled Y, whose EMF is EY that we do not know. But on connecting it, replacing this EX with that EY, the balance point was 72.3 centimeters. So since we know the value of maybe EX, then what will be the value of EY? Just with the length, the balance lengths, which are 50.3 and 72.3, you can say E1 over E2. Sorry. E1 over E2 will be equal to 50.3 over 72.3. And that will mean that E1 is equal to 0 0.696 of E2. So that means that E2 is the big boy here. E2 is the one that has the bigger EMF here compared to E1. Because E1 will, is having a fraction of E2. And when you check the length, E2 is having the longer length on the balance, uh, longer length as balance points on the meter bridge. So, and that's agrees with what we've been saying. So, so far so good. In the next class, we'll be talking about electrodynamics of charged particles. So before then, let's, I have uh, something, one minute please. I'd like us to check our knowledge on some things we have said about in the past. And if you have questions, I'll be happy to take questions at this point. Okay, I have some questions for you. So you should see them on your screens. And I want you to answer right now. So we'll talk about them. Okay, favor, can I help you? So in the minutes, I expect you to be through with these questions. Someone is saying Kitchell's rule two is not clear. Which one is rule two? I know we have current law, voltage law. Which one did you classify as two? Your two may be my one. But anyway, Kitchell's voltage law tells us that the algebraic, okay, okay, voltage law, Kitchell's voltage law. 
and I was have you watched the video on example zero that I posted on the YouTube channel? I suggest you watch it. I've taken time to explain Kitchell's footage loading. So if it's still not clear, please send me an email on physics104 at stu.ui.edu.ng. Can we go over the slide wire potentiometer? Please explain the instance where G is zero again. The instance where G is zero. I've said this is This is ENOX, EMF, ENOX, we know the value, but EX, we do not know. But ENOX is greater than EX. ENOX, the voltage ENOX has spread over length A to B. So the potential, we can always measure potential difference across different points on the wire. We have taken A to be fixed, and we are moving all around between A and B to a certain point X. There is a set, there are several points here, unlimited points here, or infinite number of points here. You can place your galvanometer or the jockey here, and the galvanometer will show that current is leaving your battery of unknown EMF. And when you bring it further here, where you have a larger potential difference, it will tell you that current is flowing into the galvanometer from inos because it is connected to a point of higher potential. But there is a place in between where the uh, potential difference here, the potential difference AX is equal to the EMF of the cell. So the potential difference here, when you call it, V, A, and the potential difference at uh, X, we will call it V, X. Now we can say that E, X. Okay, we can say that, sorry, we can say that when we say the potential at A is V, A, and the potential at X is V, X, then the potential difference will be V, A, VA minus VX. And if at that point, the galvanometer is not deflecting, it is showing that current is not leaving me. Current is not entering me. I'm just on my own. Current is neither entering nor leaving. At that particular point, X is called the balance point. And the potential difference at that point, which we have called VA minus VX, will be equal to the EMF of that cell which is EX. Okay, let's uh, put a stop to this and uh, this uh, pause and let's see what we have. So the first question says, let me share the results with you. The first question says, what charges have electrons? We still have two percent that feels electrons are positive. Electrons are negatively charged. We've said it over and over. Electrons are negatively charged. Electrons have negative charge. A body of a body is positively charged means that it is deficient of electrons. It contains excess electrons. It is deficient of neutrons. It contains only protons contains only electrons. I would say if body is positively charged, it means that the number of positive charges, that is the number of protons, is greater than the number of electrons. And that means that there are excess protons. I would say we have excess protons and deficiency of electrons. It's as good as saying 